Welcome to the College of Knowledge. This time, empowerment through real estate. Founder and managing director of Home Lux Property Group. With over 28 years of experience in the real estate industry, he has received several local and international accolades. Here is Justin Machibaya. Um, God created land once, and He will not recreate it again. What then? What happens is the population of the world increases daily. And as the population increases daily, the rate per square meter of any piece of land increases. And it's very important that you get that perspective right from the onset. And it's something that should be taught any child when they are born. That please work and secure at least a square meterage of piece of land to your name. Because then the Bible says, a good man rich lives inheritance for his children's children. And that's in real asset. And the reason why it's called real estate is because it's a real asset. And there's not many of them other than that really. Amongst all the classes of investment assets, we have heard about businesses that run without solid assets. And they make these billions and billions. <coughs> At the end of the day, when you look at those individuals and businesses and organizations, the bottom line, the money goes back to land and buildings. Assets that work while you sleep. Can you say cash flow? Cash flow. Yeah. That, that basically is the bottom line of real estate investment. Because you are trying to secure for yourself so that you have cash flow that enables you to carry yourself through stages and various stages of life. And it becomes a very sad situation like what we see in our nation, and in part Africa in particular, that we spend a lot of money building massive structures, a 1,200 square meter house, and you have got two or three children. It's valued at a million. And you do not think carefully that you can actually go home, walk every day on a million dollars, sleep on a million dollars, shower in a million dollars, and you are not building revenue to sustain yourself into retirement and to take care of the immediate generation and up to the tenth generation. And we, we need to think about this very carefully so that when we are talking of investments and when you work very well and you are earning the money, you know what to do with the money. Look at the balance sheet of the Facebook owner. Look at the balance sheet of any billionaire. Look at the balance sheet of any nation. Close to 50% of the wealth of developed countries GDP is actually driven by real estate. So it's a, it's a significant empowering tool that every family, every business, every organization, every nation has to take it very seriously. Part of the problem that we are facing as a nation is because our balance sheet of real estate is not securitizable because we are an agricultural nation and yet we nationalized land. What we literally did is we cut our balance sheet very, very significantly. Because the land that's there is not securitizable. Banks can give loans and the mortgages and everything that take place in any economy is very significant to playing and making a contribution towards gross domestic product. So when we talk of empowerment, we are referring to measures designed to increase the degree of autonomy and self-determination in people and communities in order to enable them to represent their interests in a reasonable, a responsible, self-determined way and so that they can act in their own authority. And real estate does that. And as the asset that continuously goes up in value, whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter whether it's in an urban setting or it's in a rural setting. That's why it becomes very important when you are starting 
that you don't necessarily dream about, I want to stay in the northern suburb. You have to find your way to the northern suburb. You can't just be, find yourself popping up like mushroom. <laughs> but we have gone through a hyper-economic environment that has enabled certain transactions and business to take place in such a manner that we made money without certain principles and protocols. And hence, we found ourselves in Borodin. But you can then get onto the property and you can find that there is no life. If you want to study and find whether a family or a people has life, look at their real estate in general. If it's dry, it's not maintained, it's not painted, furniture is upside down, it's not possible to find the spirit, soul, and bodies of those persons synchronized. And the studies have been done that showed that. And look at these pictures. This is, you know, Rwanda in 1994, when experienced a massive genocide. Look at this today. Okay, this is 2019. Dubai is a desert area. Look at this today. And you look at the Reformation. You hear about Victoria Falls and the potential of Victoria Falls. Someone earlier on spoke about the beautiful lands that we have in Zimbabwe, and I totally agree. I think it's probably one of the finest countries in the world. I'm well-traveled, I've seen it. And I love coming back home because the nation is beautiful. So when we are talking of financial empowerment through real estate, because it's a fixed asset, you can leverage it. You can go to the bank and borrow against it. Yeah? You can invest in properties that enable you to receive render while you sleep. Your apartments, you know, your high density properties. There's a businessman in town. You would know that he had 94 high density properties. Because you are buying them for what? 35,000 USD? And you are collecting 300, 350 USD a month. Calculated from a return point of view. You are actually probably playing at the level of 9%, 11%. This is in USD. And you wonder, why would a business person, a white man for that matter, own those kind of properties in the high density area? Because there's an understanding of investment property. Then there's property development. Why do we still want to be staying on the one acre and you are three people, you are five people, yet 60 families could be staying on it? So you may have found that is homeless property development, one of our key approaches is actually been densification, influencing policies and the town planning laws so that densification is enabled, so that we are able as a people to unlock value in real estate. So when you are buying a property and looking, don't just look at today's thing. Look at, can I multiply it? Can my children multiply it after me? Can my grandkids work it through uh, and increase it? Real estate is a very significant social empowerment aspect that it has. Studies have been shown, have shown that when people are well, like I said earlier on, their real estate is reflective of such. Gardens are clean. When you get to an office, like homelux. I've had people coming in to visit that actually would prefer to sit in the garden and say, Justin, can, can you please come and meet me outside? Because this is inviting. And when you speak to the staff at the office, there's a morale that is consistent with the investments that you see in real estate. And I've seen that overall. When you call me to look at your property and do evaluation, the first thing that I look at before I talk to anybody to try and sense the kind of atmosphere based on what is on the ground. So you find this is the reason why you get a person, buy a property, do it up, say, residential, and they do it up well. You find the next the guy is doing the same. And it becomes contagious because it carries a positive spirit. It gives peace and security to children. Studies have been done that show that Children that are raised up in certain 
environment feeling and experience. They tend to carry a certain way of thinking that's progressive, that's stable. So how then do we have the assets and things are upside down, even in the homes that we stay? And take stock of yourself. Reflect. Get home and change the lifestyle. And make the real estate make a contribution. Then, of course, the estate planning we've talked about, improvement to community standards and living, we have talked about that. Let's quickly talk about what then to do. Start here and start now. In my organization, there's a statement that we all stand by that I got in, in Chicago through 95% share market. There is nothing that shall withstand the continuous assault of sustained thinking. So if you are in the office and you are telling us it can't, you can actually be dismissed. It's impossible is a swear word because you have not thought what we are there to do is to grant ourselves an opportunity to think. And God has given us and placed in each one of us that infinite, infinite ability to think process until we come up with a solution. So, start small. Don't jump the gun. Build up slowly. Start off, even in Chitumbiza, build it up, do it nicely, sell it to the next guy, take your margin and move to the next one, and life goes on. Consider borrowing and mortgages. Can you borrow? Corporate working. Young people, older people, you may not be able to do something on your own. But I'm working with a group of women that came up and said, Justin is much better. Can we, we are trying to build and we can't. He says, how much do you have? Can you put down 5,000? Yes. Can you put down 5,000? Yes. How many are you? Seven. Five times seven, 35. Let's have it. Put it in the trust account. Let's work it. Okay. We get a property for 10,000. 25,000 can build. And if you look at the Effect in three years, each one of those ladies would have three properties of their own coming out of a corporate working and getting some, the correct counsel. And take a calculative approach to real estate. Get counsel. I mean, I love things that I've heard today. My son plays foreign trading. I gave him a thousand US dollars and I said, son, if you lose it, it's fine. It's your school fees. He lost it. <laughs> uh, but that enabled a bit of training because there's a client who buys a property every three, four months from, for, from Forex trading. So I know it. And I've said to him, okay, I'm going to sign up for training for that kind of an assignment. So train yourself and get to understand. Yeah? Let me close by saying, every day, uh, and I want you to look at this and look at yourself as a cost sender so that you understand the need for you to focus on revenue, yeah? Today you are going to go and sleep, right? Let's take it from tomorrow morning. You wake up, maybe in the course of the night, you are going to go to the bathroom, you switch on the light, eh? Your, your cost accounting starts there. By the time you come back, you get to the toilet, you've probably done two cents negative. You get and sit on the toilet, you're going to do what you're going to do. You're going to roll a tissue. Three cents, four cents is gone. You're going to flush. Four cents is going. Because you, it's, it's the water bill. The water meter is running outside, yeah? You're going to go to the sink. You open the tap and you wash your hands. A few cents is gone. You go back to sleep tomorrow morning. You, you, you wake up, the sun rises. You brush your teeth, squeeze the, that toothpaste. Brush. Cents are going, correct? You, you clean your toothbrush. The big one comes when you get in the shower. You towel, you use all kinds of soaps. By the time you leave your house, you are probably 50 US dollars negative. Yeah? And you are busy on WhatsApp, you are busy on this, and you are not producing nothing. And you go. You are at the office, you are spending time. There is no asset that's performing to recover what you are spending. And at the end of the day, if you are a believer, you are actually able to go before the Lord and ask for favor, for blessing. Stewardship does not work like that. We must invest.
I thank you.